guys, it's Chris here from Chris's Creative Life and I design workshops that help you create beautiful layouts from start to finish with easy to follow guides. So you guys all know I love a good theme. So this week we're going to go with a stamp of the month theme. I haven't actually done that in a really long time. So I thought why not play with that now? So just one sec, I'm just going to share this to my group. Hey, Lori. I actually don't know where it went when I went to try and share it. So I will try one more time. Ah, there we go. Hopefully it didn't go anywhere crazy. Okay. So we are going to make this super cute slimline card. Sometimes that share feature is just a little bit uh, confusing because it goes so fast that um, you don't actually know where you're sharing to. So, oops, I got my volume on up here. Okay, so. We are going to create this super cute card. Let me move my thing out of the way here so I can actually see what I got going on. So it's partially inspired by the actual artwork in the idea book, but we are gonna have some fun and do some different things with it. So in the idea book, there was like a layout with um, the different colors of paper. And so I roughly estimated what they were but we're going to um, make it into a slimline card and I did a couple of different little things along the way here. So I'm gonna put you down on my desk so you can see better. There we go. Sorry, there's a little bit of a lag always. Okay, so it is, as you can see, a slimline card, which I love. I love that we've started playing with this size again. I know it was um, around a long time ago, and that it's kind of made a comeback. So I've got all my things ready to go here. So we're gonna play with some Distress Oxides and oh, maybe. Sometimes it is hard to get a um, Do you mean ignored slimline cards or stamp of the month? Because those are two different things. So um, sometimes it is hard, right, to get a card that's going to work on a slimline because of the aspect ratio of a slimline card. But so I thought this was going to be super cute. So I tested it out this morning and we're going to recreate it. So I have here some things. We're going to go over what I have here first. So I have the stamp of the month. Remember, if you're VIP and you um, place your qualifying order, you get um, your stamp of the month for free. So then I have intense black ink because we're going to play with the Distress Oxide inks. I have a little paper towel. I have my water brush and I do have the smaller one today. And then, oh, I have some, my cardstock here. Oh, I can move out of my way because I get lots of stuff right in front of me. Slim lines. Yeah, like I said, you can't make it always work in slim line, but I love the way this one turned out. So, and then for my sentiment and the banner, this is my favorite, guys. You all know it. So I love the stitched fancy brackets, thin cuts. They are, and I'll tell you why. So it's a nice size for card making, but it's also a size that you can use for scrapbooking. It is, this is big enough that you can actually get a half decent size sentiment on it. And then you still can create a frame. So those are some of the reasons I love this thin cut. I use it all the time for all different sorts of things. Okay, 
So then our little pieces of paper. So I have flamingo and a piece from the mix-ins, the current mix-ins. I have a piece of candy apple. I have a piece of nectarine and I did run it through an embossing folder. I'll explain why I did that in a little bit. I have this piece from Wander, and then I have two pieces of avocado. Okay, then I have my Flamingo Shimmer Trim, which I love. You could also use lemonade if you prefer. I have silver sequins, my intense black ink, and then I pulled, I have candy apple, peeled paint, mustard seed, and picked raspberry. This notes are kind of messy looking, but okay. So we're gonna play with those. Then I have a card base. So I just have the standard card base. And then I have a black border that we're gonna add. Now I did stamp one before with intense black, but I'm actually gonna stamp it starting now. I just wanted it to really dry because we're going to do some water coloring with the Distress Oxide. So I wanted it to dry in time. Okay, I'm just gonna get my Versamat here so that I can stamp. Here's all my extra scraps of paper. Okay, so I'm gonna put it down on the soft side. Okay, and like I said, because I knew I was gonna do some like watercolor painting effect with the Distress Oxides, I wanted it to be an intense black. So I have it on my block. So I just took this little border stamp here. So the little apple, pineapple, watermelon, and lemon. Okay. And my intense black. And I'm just going to run it across the bottom border. And think oh here okay so because it's a border and I don't want it to look perfect I'm going to start just off the edge of the paper I don't know if you could see that I probably should put let's see if I have a big enough color so you can see so I'm going to stamp it part way off so it doesn't look like it's perfectly stamped down the line. I'm not really sure if that makes sense, but so I'm going to ink up my little stamp. So you can see here, I'm watching because the pineapple is the lowest little piece there. So you can see I'm just putting the apple part way off so that when I make the border, it's not gonna be like perfect. I want it to look like it kind of started off the piece of paper. And then I don't need this again until we're at the other end. So I'm just watching the bottom of the pineapple cause that's the bot, I want that across the bottom of my card and I don't wanna go off. So, Sorry, okay, so I'm gonna tell you, well, it's not a funny story, but the, the my puppy is sitting in her chair in my office at the window. And we have super bad wasps this year. It has to do with the fact, that apparently, that we were crazy hot and dry. And um, so she was recently stung. And so now she's paranoid, and the window's open because it's actually beautiful outside and she can hear them outside the window and they keep freaking her out. So if you hear something come crashing down, it's just her coming off her chair. Okay, so here, now you can see why I did that. So now it doesn't look like it's um, like cut off. It looks like it's a continuous flow across the bottom of the card. Yeah, I just wanted to warn you in case like she takes down something when she jumps off because she probably will at some point. Okay, so we're going to set this aside to dry. Okay. And let's work on 
our other one. Okay, so this one has had some time to dry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna paint it so that before I start adding my pieces at the top, well, uh, maybe we'll just add the pieces at the top. Okay, so these are all just various sizes, okay? But I made them all two inches. So this piece is actually three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. So then I stamped across the bottom and then I picked various sizes, but these are all two inches deep. Okay, so these two are exactly the same. One is the light side and one is the dark side. And I'm gonna just add adhesive here to the light side one right on the edge. And they're the same size. So I'm just gonna attach them together. Okay, and then I'm gonna rip this one. So because it's already adhered, you can rip it quite easily. So then that one is going to be on my outer edge. Okay, and then next I have this wander piece of paper. Feel bad for her because she's actually quite paranoid now I think she's gonna oh she's left the room we're all okay now okay so then next is the nectarine that I've embossed and so the reason I embossed it you could literally do it with any embossing folder it doesn't really matter um, I just wanted it to kind of, because I had a lot of cardstock happening here in the middle I just wanted one of the layers to look a little bit different so, and this is like perfect for using up all those little scraps, okay? And then next, I have my candy apple piece. Also, you could do like a tone-on-tone -tone stamping on one of the pieces of cardstock, right? So, I could have taken one of the small images or even like this and done candy apple stamping on the candy apple cardstock just to give it a different look. Just I didn't want them all the all the pieces to look exactly the same. Okay, and then I have this is flamingo and we're going to do the same thing as I did on this end with avocado, but my piece from the mix-ins I'm going to add it to the flamingo cardstock. And I think so. This one I ripped on this end, it doesn't really matter. Oof. I just want them to be even. So I'm just lining it up in on my Versamat here to make sure that as I adhere it down. Okay, so now I'm gonna adhere this down and then I'm gonna rip this piece. Okay, so then now that I have it on the edge, I can rip it. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now that part is done, nice and easy. Okay, so now we're gonna have some fun with the Distress Oxides. So here is my all-purpose mat. So I'm just gonna throw it down here. And you can also do the same kind of concept with um, the regular inks but I wanted that kind of fun, chalky feeling. So everything has a little bit of adhesive there. 
So we're just going to clean that off before we start to paint. So everything pretty much has green on it. So I'm going to start with that. So like I said, I have my little water brush. I have a paper towel. I'm just going to take a little bit and you really, you don't need very much at all because we're hardly doing anything, but I probably need more than that. Okay, so I just put a little bit of the peeled paint on my mat. So it, and there's water in my water brush. So I'm just picking up a little bit and I'm going to paint all my things that are green. If you have too much water, you can just sop it up with your paper towel like I just did. And like I said, you really don't need very much at all. Here, I'm going to zoom you down a little bit here so you can see. As I paint. So I, you can see now ink there. So I'm just working my way across. So I'm doing all the leaves and the watermelon. This is such a cute stamp set with a name like Tutti Fruity. How could it not be cute, really? So um, on my live on Friday, I'm going to do a layout with one of my sketches. So, and the stamp set. So I have picked the photos and I'm going to use sketch number two and I'm going to use this stamp set. Not sure yet exactly on everything, but you know. Okay, so next I'm going to actually do the yellow. So I have for the yellow, I grabbed mustard seed. There we go. So again, I'm just picking, you don't really don't need very much at all. And I'm going to do the lemons and the pineapples. You could turn them into oranges too, if you want it, but they're not very round for an orange. So, And I kind of like, I, I, anybody that's watched me, I kind of like that chalky, um, wispy, not filled in, like watercolor look. So I'm being super not very careful and kind of wispy with my strokes. I'm not worrying about filling in every single little detail. Like I don't mind a little bit of the white or the white space showing through like you can see right there on that little edge of the pineapples so i don't really worry about getting everything perfectly filled in i kind of really like the look of how that looks okay so then we're gonna do candy apple so i'm gonna do candy apple on the apples and the bottom of the watermelons. So, here we go. I think I need to do a little bit of green there too, I just realized, on the edge of that watermelon. Okay, so I just did a little bit of the red on the bottom of the watermelon, okay? 
and then we're going to fill in the top with the picked raspberry. Okay, so I'm just doing a little bit at the bottom and we're going to fill it in. How cute would this be even for like a back to school card? Okay, our last apple over here. Okay, and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit more of that green and just do this little. I still have red in there. There we go. Okay, so now I just need a little tiny bit too of the picked raspberry. And same thing, I'm just cleaning off my brush a little bit because the red is um, quite pigmented. Okay, so then I just added the picked raspberry in like that so that the two of them kind of blended together because I knew I was gonna use it anyway for the um, strawberry. So, oh look, I have a pineapple. Why didn't somebody say something? I, there's a pineapple here that's not colored. Okay, so cause the, so I'm just squeezing it out until it becomes clear again. And we will do this last pineapple. And small images like this are like a great way to start um, watercoloring or painting or um, trying a, a different kind of technique because there's so little space you can't really go wrong. I'm just going to grab a wipe. I'm just going to wipe this quickly and then we're going to move on. Okay, there we go. So I'm just, before I put it away, I'll just squeeze out any ink that I might have left in my water brush, put my lid back on and put it back where it goes. Okay, so now this part is done. I have a little, little tiny black border we're gonna add but we need our sentiment. So here I have stamped, I love you very much. So I cut out my pieces and I do have an extra just in case I mess up. So I have my ink on my block, my stamp on my block, not my ink on my block. I'll just put my little foam under there and ink this up. Yeah, it's it's kind of like that rusticy. Um, it's not about being perfect, and there's so many stamp sets that are perfect to use that same kind of technique. Instead of worrying about. Um, everything having to be filled in, it kind of gives it really a nice little whimsical look. Okay, so, oh, there. Okay, so I did use intense black again for that because if that's what you've got pulled out, you might as well use it, even though I'm not coloring this in or anything, but, we're going to do a little, um, distress oxide stamping with the little strawberry and it's not really like rock and roll. It's more like two tone stamping. So for this same thing, I used picked raspberry and peeled paint. And so I'm just going to dip the strawberry 
part and it's pretty easy to see through the clear stamp and this has a pretty clear line so I'm just making sure that I, and you can see so I just put in the picked raspberry on the bottom part of the strawberry and then the leaves I'm going to ink them up in the green and if they overlap, that's totally okay too, because that's kind of a fun look. And then I'm just gonna stamp it. And obviously, same thing too, right? You could totally pick regular inks, but I wanted that um, fun little chalky feel to be for the strawberry also. And then we'll just clean this off. There we go. Put the lid back on so don't forget if you have distressed oxides you can use them for stamping too right if you don't have necessarily the right color that you're looking for okay so I'm gonna add this onto the back oh no I'm not I'm gonna put the shimmer trim on first so here I picked, you could pick any color uh, shimmer trim. I picked Flamingo. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna make everything look even across. And if everything's not perfectly lined up down here, nobody's gonna know. Okay, so. I'm just going to use my Versamat to line up the shimmer trim. Across the card. So like I said, you nice, you could add any sort of um, edge there. You could use just like a uh, quarter inch of paper if you wanted instead. But I thought just in case something went crazy, this kind of just frames everything in nicely, right? So this is Flamingo. And then I'm just gonna trim off my shimmer trim from the back. And that is garbage. Now we can put it on our little skinny black border. And obviously if you didn't want to, you don't need to do as many layers as I'm doing. But I wanted the little skinny kind of black border to kind of show off the colors. Okay, and then let us our card base. Here is my card base. So I'm just gonna fold that. And I am going to pop this up on thin 3D foam tape just because I want another a little bit bulkier. I can actually move this up now so you're not quite as close so you could see some other stuff. So I just have there, I just took them out of the package so they're stuck together. There we go. Yes, it will be on YouTube later. Ah, uh, thank you. Yes, everything always, um, if you're ever looking for something, so I do upload then every all my lives to YouTube. It would be only if something went terribly wrong that are not there. And they're much, it's much easier if you're trying to watch something later 
to find it on my YouTube channel because it's a there's a little bit less stuff, right? It's hard sometimes to find a video on the feed, but if you jump over to YouTube, it is because it's only the video portion there, right? Nothing else. It's a little bit easier to find them. But yes, Shannon, it will be. And obviously you don't have to pop it up if you don't want to. Just you guys all know I love a little dimension. Okay, so my opening's on my bottom there. I don't want to assemble it upside down because I would have done that before for sure. Like this is super cute in person too. Okay, so now I'm just going to add my black border thin cut. And you can kind of pick wherever you want it. And then same thing, I'm going to pop this up with 3D foam, just the thin. And then the last thing is we just need to add some sequins. So I picked the silver sequins and because I tried like a few different things here. I did try um, like some of the dots and I did actually have out like the black and white dots too, which I thought were cute. But I actually liked the sequins because they were a little bit sparkly and they had the white in them too. So I'm just going to a little bit there and then find a variety of sizes. So I'm just going to add them onto glue dots here. And I have some silver, some white. There's two different kinds of silver. I want some of the iridescent ones. They looked really nice on here. There we go. And then just a few small ones. So I'm just, like I said, picking out what I want and adding them onto glue dots and then they'll stick wherever I want them. Okay, so that's more than enough. There we go. The iridescent ones look, I really like them on here. They look awesome. There we go. So there's the original version and here's the one we just made. So there we go. And really, like, I do love the kind of just whimsy chalk look of the Distress Oxides. They're really actually very nice to paint with. I'll just take you off my desk there for, wait, oop. There we go. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. And like I said, with a name like Tutti Fruity Summer, how could we not use this stamp set? It's super cute. So I think that I might use ooh, this one on the layout on Friday. So I'm going to use sketch number two 
which is this one. Which is this one. So if you guys don't have that sketch and need it, just comment sketch and I'll send you in the right direction to get the sketch. But like I said, so we're gonna take that sketch and this stamp set and have some more fun on Friday. I hope I'll see some of you then. Talk to you later, guys. Bye-bye.